Hey guys, this week we're doing some maintenance on the van. Uh, if you watched the last episode, the update, uh, I told you that it's shifting a little rough because the tranny is leaking some fluid and the uh, rear diff is making some noise because I don't know. <laughs> but we're gonna start with fixing the transmission pan gasket because I think that's the big culprit. And then I'm gonna change the oil and the rear diff. We'll kind of look at it, see what's going on in there, but not super hopeful that's gonna solve it, but it's the cheapest route to go to start. So we'll try that out, see if it works. If it doesn't, I'm just down $15 in oil. So changing the transmission pan gasket is a really straightforward task, but I figured we'd cover it anyway for those of you who are following along looking to buy a used van like this, because chances are stuff like this will be on your list of maintenance items. But before we dig in, I wanna get our work area a bit cleaner than it is. Ooh, that's hot water. Using some purple power and a pressure washer, we're able to get the big chunks of grime and residue off. We're gonna go with the softer setting on the pressure washer though so we don't blow out any gaskets. And while I was at it, I decided to spray off the van itself. You'd be surprised at just how much crud comes out of the nooks and crannies on your rig with the pressure washer. After drip drying for a while, we can start to remove our pan. These aren't like your regular old engine oil pans though, there's no drain plug in these guys. But they're still full of oil. So how do we actually remove this without a huge mess? Very carefully and even then, we're still probably gonna make a huge mess. So after breaking every bolt loose, they're like finger tight, which tells me that that gasket has shrunk because this should be a lot tighter than that. So there is a really good chance that this is the main cause of the oil leak, so I'm pretty optimistic about it. It's already dripping out of the front of the pan, so I think that's the side we're gonna try and dump all the oil out from. And here comes the mess. We'll remove all the bolts from one side, letting the front tip down, and very carefully, without dropping an entire gallon of oil on your face, we'll pour it into the catch pan. And after looking at this tranny fluid, it's not exactly what I was hoping to see. So looking at the oil on the bottom of this pan, it's a little dark. Should be more of a red color. Um, I don't know. Uh, I can't say it smells burnt, but uh, it's not the best sign in the world. It means this transmission's kind of had a hard life. It's still running for now, so I'm glad we're doing this right now. Going back under the van, you'll see this black plastic box and that's the transmission filter. While we have it all open, we'll go ahead and change that as well. There's one little piece we need to change located up in the bottom of the transmission, so we'll let the oil drip off a bit before sticking our face underneath. This little fitting goes with the new filter and it needs to be replaced to make a tight seal since tranny fluid gets sucked through the filter. The old one is press fit up in here. We'll have to be careful not to gouge anything, but with a hammer and a little pick, the old seal will eventually pull out and we can drive the new one in with a hammer and a socket. This is a tad bit tricky I found out, but take your time, keep everything straight, and you'll eventually get it. Using a combination of paint scrapers, Scotch-Brite pads, a brass wire brush, purple power, and brake cleaner, we can finally see what this pan is meant to look like, and it'll probably stick out like a sore thumb around its oil-encrusted neighbors underneath the van. And just like with our transfer case and any other gasket mating surface, we'll need to get it nice and clean or else all this work that we've done will be for nothing. I use the same razor blade method when I do this in order to remove gasket without removing metal from the pan. And for the really pesky fine bits, I use my brass wire brush, which I think is fine as long as you're not super rough with it. And of course, we'll do the same thing to the mating surface on the transmission side as well. Luckily, we got the right gasket from the auto parts store first try, so we can immediately begin reassembly. We'll use a few bolts placed around the pan to hold the gasket in place as we made it up. After getting every bolt in by a few threads and a kind of star pattern, we'll hand tighten everything down before torquing it to spec the same way. You'll have to torque more than once too, because as the bolts tighten, it crushes the gasket, loosening the bolts a tad, so just keep going around until everything is set to proper torque. 
All that's left to do is to fill it with oil. And we'll start doing this a little bit at a time because overfilling the transmission can cause damage to it too. And with no drain plug, it's not super easy getting the oil back out. I started with four, but in all this took five quarts to top off. After adding some fluid and starting it up, we'll run it through the gears with our foot on the brake to get the fluid to cycle through the system again. And to check the fluid level, we'll look at the dipstick with the engine up to temperature and idling in park. Once we get the right fluid level, our gasket job is done. All right, now we're headed to the back of the van. We got the transmission pan all sealed up. It took for a test drive, everything works. Uh, but now we're gonna change the oil in the rear differential. It's making some noise, not all the time. It's when it's hot on the freeway going up a grade, it starts to get louder and louder. Um, and then it'll go away once it cools down. So I'm hoping maybe it's either low on oil or the oil's just shot, which would be weird, but it's shot in the dark. It's also really cheap to do. So we're gonna try that out and hope it works. After hitting all the bolts with penetrating fluid and letting it sit for a little bit, this is essentially a play-by-play -play of what we just did with the transmission. I'm opening up the fill plug first to check fluid level and see what it looks like. That is easier than I thought it would be. The differential is full of oil when it runs out of this hole, so it should be level with the opening if there's enough in here. So that oil looks pretty clean. Not optimistic on this one, but it's worth a try. And just like with the tranny, there's no drain plug. So we'll remove all the bolts and drain the gear oil from the bottom. And you can see that there's some discoloration to the oil, which could mean possible worn bearings or gears getting too hot under load. All right. There is our rear end. Oh, that stuff stinks. Just one more little thing. It's a little bit concerning on the magnet under here. There are some small chunks of metal. Not sure what they are exactly, as far as like where they're from in there, but something isn't the happiest back here. Obviously, everything is working as it should in this diff. It's just a matter of figuring out if it's worn beyond normal and needs a full rebuild, which is something I could get some input on with some of your more experienced eyes. We'll spray it down with some brake cleaner so we can get a good look at the teeth on these gears. Okay, all you mechanically minded people out there, I know that there's some out there watching this series. So you can see the wear, Oop, yeah. you can see the wear is starting there and all the way towards the end. And you can see it's kind of marred on the end of the gear teeth to where you can kind of feel it. If you ran a cotton rag over it, it'd grab a bunch of fibers. Hard to see the pinion way back in there, but it looks like it's got wear. You can see the wear marks on there too. So if we go to the other side of the drive gears, you can also see wear as well and marring. So I guess my question for all you guys out there that know more than me, is this ring and pinion shot? Is the backlash and pinion depth set up incorrectly? If it is, is it because of faulty bearings? I don't know. Uh, this is all new to me. Maybe I need to buy a book. If you have any suggestions, leave them in the comments. But yeah, it's definitely not shiny new looking. Again, it has 150,000 miles on it. Maybe this is normal, maybe it's not, but that's the shape it's in. It isn't blown up, but it isn't brand new. I'm also not sure how much play should be in these gears, but here's what it's looking like. I know I might be opening the can of worms, kind of like looking on WebMD when your side aches and it says everything's gonna kill you. But for those of you familiar with working on differentials, how is this looking for 150,000 miles? My hunch is it's gonna need a rebuild soon with fresh gears, but leave your opinions in the comments below. I'd love to hear them. To finish the job, like always, we'll clean our gasket surfaces, make sure any leftover brake cleaner has completely evaporated in the pumpkin, get our new gasket in, then torque it down and fill it up. This took about two quarts of gear oil. And while I was at it, I decided to do a quick oil change too, since we were due for one here pretty quick anyway. All right, sir and I are gonna go take this thing for a quick drive. Uh, we're gonna go out to the highway to kind of 60-ish speeds and go up a big grade out there uh, and see if we hear any noise from the rear end. Might not be a long enough drive to make it scream like it was when we went on our trip, 
but at least it'll be a good test to see if it holds together. I don't know. Alright, I'm gonna get the camera. Before we go, I'm gonna look under there and see if there's any fluid dripping from where I sealed stuff. All systems go? It looks like we're good. I really do hope that this solves it so we can start building out the inside. I'm tired of being underneath the van. Yeah? I'm yeah. Bad. All right, we're on the free highway. We're on the highway. <laughs> shifting pretty smooth. All right, now we're going 60, which is about the sweet spot for this. I think I still feel that rear end though. We'll go up this grade so maybe you can hear it better, but yeah, it's disappointing. We found shards of metal. Yeah, that wasn't really a good thing. I mean, it cruises really well other than that rear end. I think the vibration's coming from back there too. Yeah. If I'm being completely honest. How much is it to rebuild the rear end? Well, if you have somebody do it, it's like 1500 bucks. So like 1500 bucks. It's more than we paid for this. I know. Transmission still works, but rear end not so much. Thank you, Sarah, for filming. Uh, but yeah, so I guess it's, I don't know. I guess I need to figure out what to do about the rear end. Is it worth trying to pull one from a junkyard? Should yeah. I try and re, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Should I try and rebuild this one myself? Should we have a professional do it? Uh, it just comes down to budget and how much we want to spend on it, I suppose, but. Anyway, I still want your guys' input on that, what you think about the rear end. Hope you like this video. If you want to see this van continue to grow, subscribe to the channel and follow along. So, until next time. Keep that rubber side. Down.